Hey everybody, Chad Allen here and welcome to Back to the Basics Episode 3. Alright, in the first two tutorials we took a look at the interface, we took a look at how to navigate around uh, your, your world, we took a look at how to add objects, how to um, move your objects around, scaling and rotating, and all those fun things. Now we can get into some basic modeling, which this is the fun stuff. Now I say basic modeling because uh, there's a lot to learn when it comes to modeling and I can't teach you everything in one tutorial It'd be very very long and I'm trying to keep these basic ones kind of short Just give you the basics and let you impress me with your creativity and your critical thinking ability So as we start modeling this blender logo, I'm not gonna show you step by step I'm gonna show you the skills I'm gonna give you the information you need and I want you to impress me with what you can come up with because that's what this is all about folks so let's go ahead and get started with a new scene Go ahead and close that. All right, so here we are. By this point, you're probably pretty familiar with the interface. You know, there's still a lot of buttons we haven't gone through. So, um, you know, we'll get there. But uh, first thing I want to do is we don't need our default cube here because uh, what we're going to use is Shift A or uh, going up here to add, as we mentioned in a previous tutorial. And we're going to either box model or curve model our, our logo. Now, one of the things you need to know is whenever you're going to model something, you need a reference image. Let me just delete this cube real quick. You're going to need a reference image because it's easier to get proportions and everything right if you have something on the screen that you can reference and look at and get everything just right. Otherwise, things can turn out a little funky. So what we're going to do is load the Blender logo into the background so we can basically trace over it. So to do that, we're going to hit 7 to go into top view. And what we're going to need to be is an orthographic view. So hit 5 on the number pad. and. Uh, if you're having trouble with that, just refer back to uh, episodes one and two of uh, Back to the Basics and uh, they'll catch you up there. Okay, so now we can hit N to bring up our number panel and there's all these options. Right here at the bottom is, haha, background images. If we click that to turn it on, oh, I am just dropping things left and right today. We can toggle this down and we can add an image. Now this is where we're gonna add our reference image. Now what we can do, an awesome thing about this, is we can load a whole bunch of reference images Say, example, we're modeling a car or, or something, and uh, we can load in the front view, the side view, the top view, the back view, and we can load those into different views to where as we switch between views, the background image will also change. That's awesome. But for what we're doing, all we really need is just one view. So we can click Open, select our Blender logo. This is what we're going to be modeling, and hit Open, and there it is. Now, there's some options with background images. There's uh, transparency. You can make it more or less transparent. Uh, depending on your needs and depending on how your model looks if having it like this makes it hard to see your vertices and your edges Then you can bump it down just to make it easier to see we're gonna go ahead and just leave ours at 0.5 and We can adjust the size of it X and Y um, All that good stuff. Okay to the modeling. Let's not uh, waste too much time. I'm just gonna reposition well, actually, I'm going to talk about two different types of modeling. I'm going to talk about box modeling and curve modeling. Now, there are a lot of things to learn, so I'm just going to touch on the basics. Uh, for a logo like this, I would normally choose curve modeling just to make things quicker. Um, but let me go ahead and show you basically what box modeling is. Box modeling is using a mesh. We'll hit Shift A and we'll select a plane. Then we can grab it and scale it down. And what we're basically going to do is if we go into edit mode is use these vertices and extrude um, in part two I talked about E for extrude and extrude outsides and basically trace out for this example the letter B. Um, what, we, what we will need to do so we can see our background images is we're going to need to get rid of this solid shading. And that's easy to do by hitting Z, Z on the keyboard or Z and that will toggle your solid and wireframe which is helpful. You can also go down right here and change between your views here, solid, wireframe, even do bounding box, textured, which we'll get into how to view that later on. So uh, we go to wireframe mode and then we can just continue working. I'm in edit mode, by the way, which I hit tab to get into. And then we can just position this. Now I'm not gonna model this whole letter, but uh, one thing I wanna mention is if you wanna select more than one vertice, like see, I wanna select this one and this one and move them in. What I can do is hold down shift and select, or if I press B, I can select box select, which if I left click and drag, it'll select everything inside that bounding box, B for box. Also, you can select C, and that gives you this circle, 
where it's basically a paintbrush. You scroll the middle mouse wheel, you can make it larger or smaller. <coughs> Excuse me. And then by left click and dragging, you can select multiple points, or you can just click on each point as such. If we center mouse, hold down the center button, we can deselect. So good information to know. So I'm gonna hit B, box select, move these in, deselect everything, B, box select, move these in, hit A to deselect everything, box select that, move it down to right about there, then I'm going to extrude by hitting E, drag up to about there, E to extrude, drag up a little bit, E to extrude, drag up to about here, E to extrude, take it all the way to the top, then I'm gonna grab this one point and bring it up. With me so far, guys? Now, I know you're probably asking, why did I extrude at these points? Well, that's because I wanna extrude a face that goes around this curve, and so I put a point here so that I can select that point, and I put a point there so I can select that, so if I hit extrude, it'll bring out just between those two points. So I can hit G and grab, I can extrude again, hit G and grab, you know, select each point, position them as well as you can. Try to get it as close to perfect. I'm just kind of rushing through this so it's not going to look very good. But that's really the basics of boss mo box modeling. I would keep extruding, ow, sorry, I think I bumped the mic there. I'd keep extruding all the way around and just how I was just doing here, of course I'd be a little more fine tuned than how I am here, and uh, come all the way around with it and, and that's, that's box modeling. Um, then we could apply a subdivision surface modifier to it to give it a more circular, smoothed out look. And uh, we'll actually probably get into that uh, a little bit later in a later tutorial. But for now, let me uh, pause this real quick because there's one thing I want to show you that's helpful with box modeling and uh, we'll get right back to it. So hang on. Okay, so I went ahead and I extruded this out very, very poorly. You know, you'd want to go in and right click and select vertices and uh, you know, fine tune it, position it to get it look a little bit better than this horrible, horrible example. But uh, the point of this example is uh, a couple of tools I wanted to mention. As I was extruding around, see, I missed a big chunk. I sh probably should have done a couple more extrusions in here, but I didn't, so now I have this really horrible looking edge. To fix this, and this is a great tool, it's called the loop cut. Now with the loop cut, it's gonna add these loop cuts in here, like these, going across to where I can smooth out this edge and uh, make everything, hang on one second, make everything look how it should. So to do a loop cut, you hit Control R and you'll see it pops up this line and we can position it right about there, move it over, hit Control R again, you know, move it over, add as many loops as we need or alternately, you can also, if you know you're gonna need three in there, you can. Uh, control R and then roll the mouse wheel until you get your three left click to confirm and then what we can do is click and drag click and drag click and drag and you see how that'll help us fill it in the other thing I wanted to talk about is this gap right here because see I started extruding out this edge and then they got to meet at some point but we want them to merge together so the quickest easiest way to do it is to select all four edges, hold down shift, right click, right click, right click, right click, and we wanna create a face there. So what we can do is just fill that in by hitting F, F to fill. Watch what happens. Bam, our face is created and we're good to go. Now, of course it's flat because we're talking about box modeling here, so what we can do is select the whole thing, extrude along the Z axis, you know, and there we've got our basic, our basic B, and what we can do you know what, I'll get into modifiers later on. Let's go ahead and talk about curve modeling. Let me just go back and actually, let's go back into top view. And now let's talk about though. What I'm gonna do is curve model this. And I'm actually gonna talk about this rather quickly. We're going to create a new object. We're gonna create a curve this time. And we're gonna create a Bezier curve. So we'll click that and it's way over here. And what we have here is we have a pair of points and our little Bezier handles, kind of like uh, the paint, paint or uh, pen tool in After Effects or Photoshop. And we can adjust those by, you know, G, and it'll adjust the curve as needed. <coughs> Excuse me again. What we need to do is select everything and then hit V, and that'll make it a straight line. Now you see these little lines coming off here. That's because this is a 3D curve. We could move this in 3D space to give the curve a third dimension. But what we're gonna do is just 2D 
trace around this just like you would with a pen tool in Photoshop, After Effects, or GIMP. We're going to go to our curve settings. And right here, you'll see 2D and 3D. We want a 2D curve. So that way you'll notice those lines are gone. See, these lines won't be there when we go to 2D, which is exactly what we want. And now, basically just like box modeling, we're going to scale this down. And it's a combination of kind of, I guess, box modeling and the pen tool. Uh, we'll grab this one and put it in place. And then just like box modeling, hit E to extrude. And you can extrude a point out to the side of the curve and then grab your little handles and stretch it out into place. E to extrude. Oh, control Z. Control Z, let's actually make that straight. What we're gonna do is we're gonna E to extrude. E to extrude, E to extrude, and so on and so forth. It's better to do all straight lines just where you know there's a curve, go to each side of the curve and plan a point. You can also control and left click, left click. See, now that's getting in the way, so we'll turn that off. Left click, you can do it that way to flush it out. And then after you've done that, when you get to where all you have is just to fill in this arc right here, press Alt-C, and that'll fill it in and create your shape. And you'll see it's filled. We'll hit Z to toggle into wireframe. And now we can go back and flesh this out. So I'm going to leave that part up to you. What I want you guys to do as your homework assignment is to download the Blender logo and begin, uh, try box modeling and try curve modeling as I've shown you in this tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and close this one out now. We'll be back in part two with our finished curve. And then we'll get into go ahead and curve model the logo and box model the text. Now, I know there is a font selection in Shift A. Whoop. Tab, Shift A. I know there is a text selection where we can add text and then tab in and change our text. But I don't want you to do that. I want you to box model these letters. The reason you're box modeling them is practice, practice, practice. These are fairly simple letters for box modeling. And uh, if you can handle box modeling these perfectly, in other words, much better than I did this V, then you can box model. You know, you've learned the, the skill and you'll be able to go forward. So don't take the easy way out. Box model. And uh, we'll see what you guys got next time. I will see you tomorrow for a little more modeling and hopefully the basics of materials. Take it easy, guys.